our next step is to start building constructors. So this, again, is going to be just added complexity throughout it. We're going to start out pretty simple in x and y, and we've got this method to print our point, public stack, uh, sorry, public void print this point. Right, takes in no parameters, returns nothing, and it's just a print line that prints this particular object's x and this particular object's y. That's what this.x and this.y mean. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and write maybe a, another basic method. Right, this one is going to be maybe um, oh, let's say make this fairly straightforward. Public uh, void increment x and y. And what this one will do is fairly straightforward. It will basically increase the x variable and the y variable both by 1, which is fairly straightforward to do. We say this x is equal to this what's currently in this object in this point's x plus 1, right? So take what's in this inside of this.x, add 1 to it, and store it in this.x. Then we do the same for y. This dot y is equal to this dot y plus one. All right. And so if we run this in our driver now, um, p1 dot increment x and y, uh, p1 dot print this point, and we can run that, and we now get five seven six eight and 2, negative 2, which is to be expected, actually. So now point, we've got print this point, increment x and y. So let's take a look at constructors. So we are currently calling a constructor right here whenever we use new class name. So class name variable is equal to new class name with a constructor. So what a constructor is is that it um, provides basically Java where it defines the specific things we want to happen when we build a class. Um, now you'd be going, well, uh, Professor Rosen, we did not define any constructors. Um, and the answer is yes, you didn't. And you might then go, okay, how do we use it? And or how are we using something we haven't defined yet? To which I reply, magic or Java. So when you do not define a constructor, Java automatically define writes an automatic one for automatic automatically writes one for you and it looks something like this public point so notice that the class name and the constructor name are the same notice the lack of a return type and that's what a default constructor looks like it does notice that it doesn't set x and y to anything so let's go ahead and see what happens with making a point p3 is equal to new point okay and this is just again to show you guys that we haven't really done this this is hasn't changed anything p3 dot print this point so if we run this we get five seven six eight right that's point one both of those two negative two and zero zero so you might be going again well why are x and y zero we didn't define anything well just like with arrays when you create them they have a default value and the default value is the same here. If you the x and y will have a default value of zero, um, or integers rather, will have a default value of zero, which x and y are. So um, we can be a bit more explicit about that. Hey, if you um, when you create a point, we say this dot x is equal to zero, and this dot y is equal to zero. Okay. Um, another thing we can do is that right. It's kind of annoying that what we're doing right over here is that we have to, um, is that we waste these lines over here um, defining that we want x and y to be 5 and 7 and 2 and negative 2 uh, to be x and y here. So what we can do is that we can write a second constructor. We can have as many or as, as, as few constructors as we want um, when we write this, uh, when we write classes. So, so long as they have different variables. Um, different amounts of variables and different variable uh, intakes. Right, see here it's giving me an error for having two uh, point constructors. But we're going to have one, this one is going to take in an int x and an int y. Now here, what's important to understand is notice that these x and y's are colored different than these x and y's. 
these parameters over here are colored differently than these. These are because x and y, as taken in over here, are local variables. So let's go ahead and say, and this is important. I'm going to do x is equal to x, y is equal to y, because here my intention is, right, we take this, we take that x and store it in this x, and take that y and store it in this y, right? And so now if what we can do is that we can say uh, 5, 7 are my x and y's, and 2, negative 2, right? And if I don't provide it, it just automatically becomes 0, 0. And you'll see that I got, oh, what's this? Is a bunch of zeros and ones? Well, again, let's go back to point. These are both local variables. x is equal to x, y is equal to y. In order to x, what I did here is that these local variables overshadow the uh, instance variables that have the same name because they're more specific. Um, so how do I get around that? Well, I could say um, new x, new y, which is not the way I'm going to do it, but you can see that that would work, right? Um, now if we run the point driver class, we'll see that we get the desired results. The other way to do it, and this is actually the way that uh, will happen if you, you happen to use um, the automatic um, generators, is to you say that the local var that x, oops, the local variable x is equal to x, the local variable y is equal to y. It gets stored in this dot y. So this is the way to do the, the Java way to do things, which is say, uh, which is that we match up the variables. We give the variables in the constructors the same name as the as the instance variables over here, uh, so that it's easy to match up. So that's how you write your constructors. They're fairly straightforward to write.